Hello, and guess what? I think I might have found it. What have I found? My Strat. <laughs> Okay, so what, I, what did I get? Well, I've looked at loads of Strat types and Fender Strats, and I really wanted a Strat, I think, for quite a while. Although, weirdly, in my head, I think I wanted a Telecaster. And I absolutely can't find a Telecaster that I love. Um, that's, that's around about the £1,000 mark. So, um, a few weeks ago, me and some buddies went down to visit Anderton's and then we went on to Guitar Guitar in Epsom which is very close and um, at Anderton's I, I tried out a beautiful um, road worn Strat that's in like a metallic blue nitro finish quite a chunky neck um, and um, but it was beautiful absolutely beautiful sound but um, I didn't get it because I thought I don't need another guitar blah 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 and um, it didn't make me want to do something about it although it was close um, and then um, I moved over to Epsom with the idea that I wasn't looking to buy a guitar just trying loads of stuff out see if something took my imagination maybe I'd do a little video and have a little bit of a play and um, and I must have been in there an hour and didn't really find anything that inspired me. And I was kind of on the brink of leaving at the Epson store. And both stores are great in terms of letting you try stuff out and so forth. And I was on the brink of leaving and I was just starting to kind of make my way to the entrance or the exit of the store. And I looked up and my eye was caught by a metallic blue finish. And then I look, looked at more detail of, uh, to the guitar I was looking at. And I literally went, what the hell is that? And that was a very slippery slope to me, ended up getting it. So what is it? Well, this is a Fender made in Japan. Stratocaster, modern Stratocaster in mystic blue. Mystic blue is kind of like a, a metallic blue finish. I don't know if you can see that. Um, it's also bound, which I loved as well. And, um, and yeah, it's a really interesting guitar. Before I go on, I just want to say that I'm a hypocrite because in chatting to my buddies, two of which have strats, um, quite expensive strats, um, you know, it, I'd say to them, well, okay, if I was ever to get a Strat, I don't want noiseless pickups because I think it takes something away from the single coil vibe. Um, I, I don't want locking tuners because I'm, you know, I don't need locking tuners. I know, how to, you know if, if it's in tune, it stays in tune. If it's a good guitar, I'll know. Um, and, and I don't need a compound radius on the fretboard. I'm not that type of shreddy kind of guy. I don't need the easier access to the higher frets. And... Uh, <laughs> picked this guitar up, tried it out, 
beautiful tone. I mean, this is just clean. And the pickups are just lovely. And as I got to know the guitar, they told me it's a Japanese made. Um, and for some reason, I, I wasn't that keen on Japanese made guitars either. You know, I, I, my head's put me in the Ibanez, Steve I, Shreddy kind of place. Um, they told me it's Japanese. I went, Ooh, okay. Um, Rosewood, Rosewood fingerboard, compound radius. It starts at somewhere like a 10, I think, goes to a 14 um, um, radius on the fretboard. Um, <laughs> noiseless pickups. Um, and it's not a traditional strap because it's a Japanese one and as you can see, I don't know if you can see from the styling, it's a very modern style, it's not as rounded as say like if you look at the current Fender players and the Ultras and so forth, they've got quite, the American ones are quite rounded around the horns and so forth, um, this isn't. Um, weirdly what, what made me jump at this was I was, I was quite interested in the Squire Paranormal um, Nashville Stratocaster, which to me has a very similar body to this, although um, that the, the Squire is very much a, a Telecaster blocky kind of vibe, whereas this is a bit more sculpted. And and I, I kind of like the styling of that, but didn't really dig the neck on it on the Squire or, or the pickups. Although I could have changed the pickups, I guess, saved themselves some money as well. <laughs> But this captured my heart. Um, I uh, it's quite. It feels to me like it's quite toppy. Compared to other, other strats, but I tried player strats. I tried um, the American performer strat. Really didn't like that. Um, to date, probably my favourite S styles have been the um, vintage V6, um, and I was very close to considering getting one of their UK Pro Shops because my experience of the V6 was very positive, and you can see that in one of my my, my videos. Um, then, actually, weirdly, the Jet um, J350, I think it was. <laughs> I just you could put, maybe you see from the way I'm playing. Um, I had the same feeling feeling off this as with my Starler, um, my PRS Starler. Just it's love to hand, absolutely beautiful, and I just took to it. Played it for ages. A friend of mine played it for ages, and it's and it came with a case. Uh, this is actually second hand. Actually, I can't find another one of these on the internet. So there are a few dings on it, but nothing major. The worst thing is that. Right in there, I don't know if you can see it, there's a nasty looking scratch. But hey, you know what? Given this guitar is something like um, in the region of 13, 1400 new, uh, I got it for, for um, 900. Um, I feel like I've got a bargain. And the tonally, this is, this is great. What um, is also interesting as well is that I believe, although I can't fully confirm it, but I've seen it on other websites, this has got a bone nut on it. Um, the uh, locking tuners as well. I think I men maybe mentioned that earlier. So we've got locking tuners on there. Um, and the, the trem. The tuning stability is awesome. I'm, I'm really, really pleased with it. So um, I, I feel like I've had a bit of a knock around the head and, I've, and all, all of my perceptions about what I thought I would want in a Strat has almost completely changed. Um, I was almost considering a player Strat um, and then I picked this up 
and um, no, I wasn't. I really wasn't going to go down the Fender route because I, I, you know, for people like me who can't afford the really expensive guitars, I feel like we're we're not getting really good value from Fender. Um, but the Japanese stuff, oh my God, this has really got me. I mean, this has even got. Um, you can't I can't show you it now, but it's got glow in the dark inlays on the side. Um, which sounds daft, but when you're gigging and you're in, the, in a, like a, a dark room, that's actually really useful. And I know I don't know anyone else that does it apart from say Chapman guitars. Um, it's a really nice addition to a guitar, so that's nice. Um, I I just love it, and actually with a bit of gain, it's awesome. And um, I'm putting this through a um, Valentin GP200, which I'm learning how to use. But so far, I'm getting a nice tone out of it. <laughs> surprised me is how um, how much I love the snappiness of this so my PRS SE Starler I, I love it in um, when you cool tap it and I thought I got a nice snappy tone um, and to some extent in my head I kind of thought well weirdly even though it's kind of maybe more styled like a um, uh, like a Les Pauli SG type you know it's just it's just one one piece of mahogany with um, single cut um, it kind of puts me in that space but the single cool the, the cool tap on that gave me a nice twanginess this has got a slap on it I'll just turn the overdrive off maybe not showing it off very well there but what I'm what I'm getting is is for me the ability to do I've got like a really nice bit um, percussive element to this guitar which I didn't expect at all so um, yeah I'm I'm really really pleased with this really really impressed um, and kind of on a, an interesting journey now of thinking about Japanese strats and I've been reading up the history of Japanese strats and, and why they've come about. Basically the Japanese um, guitar making community kind of ripped off Fender by copying their designs and, and, and maybe even designed them better than the original strats and then Fender at some point, um, but I think in the early 80s, decided to go direct and um, made their own guitars in conjunction with some of the Japanese makers and branded them themselves. So there's a really nice history with Japanese guitars and, and what's, what I like about this is the fact that this is actually feels like it's quite rare. Um, getting a Japanese Fender over here is, is reasonably difficult because they're mostly made for the Japanese market. So to find this second hand in guitar guitar and without actually knowing about the rarity of it um, I, I feel like I've stumbled upon something that was uh, really unique, really fun, um, definitely sits in my kind of blues way of working, um, blue, sort of blues rock space as you've, you've seen, I've, I'm taking to it like a duck to water. Um, and I'm, I like I'm going to know about the flatness of a fretboard, but this is just really easy and lovely to play. So very impressed, um, well done Fender. Um, you know, and it's kind of lovely to be able to get a Strat in the 70th year of Fender. And if you go onto like the Anderton website and some of the other websites, you um, some of the other shops they're selling 70 year editions of various Fender players and Ultras and so forth. So it's a good year for the Strat, perhaps. Um, and I'm really chuffed that I got one. Um, my last one was a Squire Strat, which I had in '94. And I sold it to buy an engagement ring for my wife. 
and um, it's really nice to, after 30 years, and this will be my 30th year of marriage, really nice to have a Strat again um, and with everything that comes with it. I even got a hard case as well, so for 900 quid, this guitar and a hard case, what's not to love, so really pleased. Thank you to Guitar Guitar in Epsom for being absolutely awesome and letting me try stuff out um, and making it such a nice place to just go and try guitars. It was a real joy to go there um, and had some lovely conversations. And the other thing about Guitar Guitar in Epsom as well, which I loved, was the fact that they asked me if I was happy with the strings. I said, oh no, I'll probably put 10s on. Um, and they said, well, we can do that. I said, yeah, I know, but I've got to go back to Cambridge. And they said, no, no, we'll do it while you wait. And not only did they put a set of 10s on for me, they even reset the tremolo so it wasn't floating so it's just sort of sitting on on the the wood there so i'll just go down um, and that was all done in about 20 minutes so absolute sterling customer service um, they also do a buy now pay next year with no deposit um, which I, no one else seems to do that so that was probably the thing that tipped me over the edge to go oh i'm having that um, I'm, I'm now sending, sending a Telecaster um, so if you're interested in Telecaster do get in touch um, but um, I'm really really in love with this guitar and it's a nice complimentary guitar to my style which I'll use for different songs in my band and um, with some of my solo stuff thanks for listening and um, I hope to see you again soon in another video bye for now mm -hmm.